Let's look at guanidine. Um, this is one of the most um, basic organic compounds there is. Very strong basic compound. And to completely understand why, we see we have all these nitrogens here. So that would lead us to believe that it would definitely have basic properties. But to understand why it's so powerfully basic, we have to take a closer look at its structure and at the different resonance forms that can uh, that can be allowed. Now, back in videos 10 and 11, and in the previous video, we were talking about amides and then amidine. So when you look at the molecule, hopefully now you realize that all of these atoms are sp2 hybridized, the carbon and the nitrogens. This lone electron pair is an sp2 electron pair. These, for these nitrogens, these are lone pi or lone p orbital electron pairs. And again, we have discussed that in length now uh, in our previous videos. Now, what kind of resonance structures can we form? Because here we have overlapping pi electrons in this pi bond, and then this has a lone electron, a lone pi electron pair, and so does this. So here we have guanidine, and what we can imagine happening, as you saw us do in the previous videos, with this pi bond here, imagine that, of course, this is the carbon is contributing one electron to the pi bond, and so is the nitrogen, and the overlapping p orbitals form that pi bond. Now imagine nitrogen acquiring both of the electrons from this pi bond. Then carbon lost an electron. But now imagine that here, this nitrogen has a lone electron pair, so it donates both electrons to form a pi bond with carbon. This nitrogen that kept both electrons now has a lone pi electron pair and a negative charge because it stole an electron from carbon. And there's its sp2 lone electron pair. This one has a positive charge. It has the pi bond with carbon, but it put up both electrons to form that pi bond. Or what else could happen instead of this lone electron pair coming in to form a double bond with carbon, making a pi bond, this lone electron pair could come in, forming this structure. This is the same. This one keeps its lone pi electron pair. This one donates now to form the double bond, the pi bond, leaving this with a positive charge. So also if we look at this, we realize that these two, these two canonical structures are symmetrical. Here we have a double bond on the bottom, a single bond on top. Here the single bond is on the bottom. The double bond is on the top, as if this was just flipped over. So these are symmetrical. We have separation of charges. That's not ideal, but it is permissible. And we have this nice symmetry. So guanidine has a decent resonance system that would stabilize it. Perhaps then it would be a rather inert molecule. But instead, we know it is highly basic. It will um, uh, detach. It will let a lone proton attach to the molecule. So let's look at it in more detail. Here is guanidine, and in fact, we see one, two, three lone electron pairs that a proton could attach to here here or here. But actually, when we think about it, I guess you won't be surprised, there's only one place on the molecule where the 
proton will attach, and that's to this sp2 electron pair. It will not, uh, not attach here to these lone pi electrons, because if you do that, then these would not be available for any resonance stabilization. So when we put guanidine in, whoops, when we put guanidine into acid, the proton attaches here. So we have a bond between nitrogen and hydrogen. Nitrogen is putting up both of the atoms here, so that has a positive charge and two hydrogens on it. We don't need this then. That's That now is a protonated guanidine molecule. And this is supposed to be a positive charge on this nitrogen. So this had a lone electron sp2 pair. You put it in acid. A proton attaches to there. Now we have this. So that is the protonated form of guanidine. Now, what resonance structures can we draw with this? So let's have this down here. This has a positive charge. And these other two nitrogens both have lone pi electrons here. So one thing we could imagine happening is that perhaps, again, we have this pi bond here, both electrons going on to this nitrogen, leaving carbon with out, uh, leaving it electron deficient because this nitrogen stole the electron. But when that happens, say this lone electron pair comes in and forms the pi bond with carbon, donating both of the electrons needed to make that pi bond. So now we have this structure. And now this nitrogen has a positive charge because it put up both electrons to form that pi bond. This pi bond no longer exists. Nitrogen swiped both the electrons and kept them for itself. That would normally give this nitrogen a negative charge because it swiped an electron from carbon, but it already had a positive charge. So this has no charge on it, and we have a single bond remaining with carbon. And then we have this. And notice now that here there is no charge separation. There is a charge dispersion. And also notice these are symmetrical. Here we had a single bond and the double bond, and now the position of them has just been flipped over, so to speak. So these are symmetrical. Now, the other thing that could happen, after this nitrogen, we imagine it's stealing the electron from the carbon, instead of this lone electron pair coming in to form the double bond, this lone electron pair can come in to form the pi bond and get a double bond. And then that will give us this structure.
Let's get this in better focus. OK, what happened was, again, this, we imagine stealing an electron. So we have it like this. It had a positive charge. It kept the electron from nitrogen. That would normally give it a negative charge, but it had a positive charge to begin with. So it's like this, no charge on it, with a lone pi pair of electrons. Then this nitrogen donates its lone pair of pi electrons to form the double bond. It put up both electrons to make that pi bond. So now this one has a positive charge. And this one remains the same. So we have this canonical structure right here. And let's look at it closely between here and here. Here we see that in this case, the single bond is on top. The double bond is to the left and on the bottom. Here now, the positive, the double bond with the positive charge, that's now on top. And this is now down here. It's just as if we just flipped it around. So this is also symmetrical. This is a plus charge. So notice that when the guanidine is protonated, where there was originally an sp2 lone electron pair, it gives this very strong resonance system with these one, two, three canonical structures, no charge separation, only charge dispersion, and their symmetry between all three of them. So that is what makes guanidine such a powerful base, is that when it's protonated, it has this marvelous uh, resonance system, meaning it's very strongly stabilized. And in fact, I think most uh, guanidines have a pKa of almost 14, like 13.5 5 or 13.6. And again, it's because of this strong resonance system that occurs when that sp2 electron has a proton attached to it, forming this compound that sets it up for this very strong resonance system. OK, uh, that's it for this video. Hopefully that was helpful. Um, Again, a reminder that the playlist for all the videos is at the website, digital-university.org.